I'm off to London Book Fair. I am running late. So, um, yeah. Believe it or not, we had some crazy stuff happening yesterday. So last night, when I was trying to sleep, we had a prostitute outside the house arguing with her pimp about her race. So, scaring the cat. And they kept going till about 2 a.m. So I overslept a bit this morning, so I'm running late. But I'm off to London Book Fair, so let's go. So the actual travel to Book Fair was kind of a pain. I had to go from where I live in High Wycombe into London, all the way up to North London to come back down again to Kensington Olympia. So this is the first thing I saw as I kind of walked through the door. It's actually my second year going along to Book Fair. I get a lot of people asking me whether it's worth going and it's not worth going as a reader but if you are involved in the industry whether it's as a blogger or you know a journalist, a publisher, whether you're in book marketing, anything like that, it's usually worth going along just to get you know a feel for what's happening in the industry and to pick up what you can from all of the free seminars. Oh, The Incredibles. So this year's market focus at the London Book Fair was the Baltic countries and obviously Latvia is one of those Baltic countries so while I was there I went along to visit the Latvia stand and to meet up with the friends that I made while I was there. There's Penguin Random House. I mean, all of the publishers really have got a presence here from, you know, even things like the AA who publish like roadmaps and things like that have got a presence here. A lot of the books that you're seeing at the moment are books that I deliberately kind of filmed because I wanted to remember them and check them out myself. I was actually going around and learning as much as I could about the various different bits of translated fiction from, you know, Russian to Maltese, for example. There's Indonesia there. And there's going to be a little bit of a haul at the end of this video where I show you some more of the things that I brought home with me. Here's the Poets Corner. There was a little coffee shop near there as well, so this was kind of my default place to go when I needed to, to have a sit down. This is the new title showcase. I think you actually pay to get your books put on that showcase. So I don't think you actually get there on merit, so I didn't pay too much attention to those, but... I think it's just nice to go around and to see all of the different books, like the Wordsworth Classics there as well. And it's interesting because they all share their, um, you know, their, their their base value rather than their RRP. So you see what, you know, bookshops actually pay for the books that they get in. And it isn't very much. <laughs> but I suppose they add a lot to it to, you know, cover their overheads and that sort of thing. So this is actually on one of the upper floors. There are kind of, there's kind of one big room downstairs. And then there's a big upstairs bit. And then there's kind of a second room as well. It's absolutely massive. It's hard really to overstate how big London Book Fair is. But that's what makes it so great, you know. You can spend the whole day there and at the end of the day you've just about finished seeing everything. And you can actually go back for three days and, you know, carry on networking, go to some of the educational sessions and that sort of thing. What we're looking at the moment are some of the, kind of, this is the book depot, some of the different providers of, you know, cheap paperbacks, cheap hardbacks. So this is where you'll go if you're a bookseller or a bookshop and you want to kind of make connections for potential suppliers. So for example, this place got a bunch of DC comics and also Marvel as well. Here we have Author's Corner, Nosy Crow. So there is, of course, a big children's literature section and that's where we're walking around at the moment. And now all of this art that we're looking at here is also created by the Baltics as well. So those wolves on the left are Rainus Petersons, who actually drew me a fridge magnet while I was in Latvia. This would be a sort of promotional area for a new book that Bill Clinton has written with James Patterson, apparently. So I managed to get my photo taken in the Oval Office. Here we go. This is the smaller of the two rooms that you're looking at as well, just to give you a good idea of that. And of course, Nora Eckstainer is one of the authors of the fair. There's Donald Trump playing a little bit of golf. And he was walking around with kind of the Secret Service behind him as well. Here we go. And you'll notice just then as well the uh, Irish stand. So I went along there and was talking about the Irish readathon that happened recently. And uh, Leanne Rose and Fred Weasley died laughing and all the awesome channels here on BookTube who have been making that happen. This is the Walking Dead bar. So again, we're on the top at the moment, walking around the outside. And this is the opening of the show. It's my great pleasure to introduce a wonderful Pat Hume to you. I'm currently studying here at, in London at the Royal Academy of Music. Both of 
Singapore, across the United Kingdom, Europe, and Asia, participating in numerous music festivals and concert plays from the Royal Festival Hall, the Big World Hall, the Barbican Centre, and many more. Would you please give a very warm welcome to cellist Margarita Baladas and violinist Robert Baladas. <laughs> So after that really it was just a case of continuing to wander around and to pick up any of the bits that I missed. I like to go around all the different stands and you know get brochures where I'm interested in that sort of thing. Share business cards so they can get in touch if they have any books that they want me to review. And then after that I went for a cheeky pint with a chap you might recognise. It's of course Scott from Bookax here on Booktube. And we talked about all sorts of things from BookAx as a platform to what we think of BookTube, the new partner changes, all of this stuff. And it was just generally lovely. Okay, so as you can see, I am back from London Book Fair. I thought I'd sort of top and tail this video with a little bit of like a mini haul showing off some of the bits and bobs that I got while I was there. Some of them are specifically books, so that will go in my end of the month haul as well. But also it's here. This is EUPL, nine prize winning authors from Estonia, Latvia and Lithuania. So this is the European Union Prize for Literature. And yeah, we've got, again, nine different sort of shorts and whatnot in here from the different countries. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. Some random stuff, not all of these are books. This is the New York Review of Books. I should point out all the stuff that I'm mentioning here from London Book Fair was free as well. So. You know, it helps to pay for the uh, cost of the ticket, if nothing else. And it's nice to see people that you know. We got uh, publishing perspectives here, an issue of that. This is the new title showcase magazine. So this is, from what I understand actually, people basically pay to get their books listed in this. And there, there was a wall of all of these books, so you could look at them and they weren't very good. It was quite clearly like indie and self-published authors who just spunked their entire marketing budget up the wall to get them in this showcase. This is books from Slovakia. So um, as I was going around and seeing people doing translated fiction and non-fiction and poetry, to be honest, the whole lot. As, but as I was going around and seeing people, I was trying to grab as many of the little booklets as I could for the different translated fictions. This is um, Self Made Hero. So they are a small publisher that publishes mostly like graphic novels quite often with like narratives so I've read one of theirs that was a graphic novel about uh, Agatha Christie when she went missing and what happened to her in this time and stuff and uh, yeah so I just thought I'd grab their their magazine this is from the Latvian stand so hunt down the introverts and events calendar so all the different stuff that is going on because they're doing lots of events in London like gigs and all this kind of stuff so this is a little program of that in fact, here we do have an invitation to a gig, a concert by indie rock band Sigma, who I saw in Riga. So they played in London and they actually they changed the songs so they sang them in English instead of Latvian, which is quite impressive, I would say. Yeah, all of the song lyrics from their new album are written by well-known Latvian poets. And um, yeah, I didn't go to see them just because I have seen them already. And they are in my Visiting Riga video, which is down there somewhere. Now I've got this, Crossings Newcastle Poetry Festival, 2nd to the 5th of May 2018. Just thought it'd be nice to make it. I don't know if I will or not. Uh, Icon Books. I quite liked from their stand. They had these like practical guys. I just like I like quite like the aesthetics of them for some reason. Can't really see. It's not in focus. But anyway, what else did I get? 
This is uh, the Baltics Riveter, Riveting Baltics Writing Edition 4. So I believe, yep, yeah, this is like, you know, it's like a literary magazine basically for Baltic literature. I've got these little things which I'm going to put on the wall. So this is by, uh, oh, in fact, this is by Arenas Petersons, who is the guy who drew me a fridge magnet. And uh, he's, uh, he's like Latvia's, basi basically he's Latvia's only full-time illustrator, if that makes sense. Uh, let me have this, some more. I hope I'm right. Yeah, I am holding this the right way around. This is by Gundega Musicante. And this is by Gunnar's Crollins. So, I just thought these were cool little postcards. I'll probably put them up on my wall. All Latvian illustrators there. I got this, a new writing from Ireland. So this is from the Ireland stand. And I was talking to them about the Irish Readathon and Aoife from Fred Weasley. Aoife from Fred Weasley dies laugh. I can't ever say a bloody channel name, but you know who I'm talking about. I got this. This is hilarious Estonia, and this is like a translated. I, I guess it's like a children's book of some sort. I got this. This is the event brochure from the Poetry Collective. So it says featuring over 20 independent publishers and poetry organisations. I actually met while I was there the lady who she, well the lady who works for the Forward Arts Foundation and um, basically I've read a few of the Forward Arts books because I ran I won a competition a National Poetry Day competition and um, I ran, won a bunch of their books but I also was like chatting to her about this year's Forward Prize because I happen to know that Jen Campbell is one of the judges for it. And so, um, and I've read like the winning ones of last year and uh, highlights of like the last 25 years and stuff. So it was cool to be able to chat to her about that. Just happened to spot her wandering around and saw Forward Arts Foundation on her badge and kind of stopped her. And then this is Blood Axe Books and their little, what do you call it? Like a brochure. <laughs> this is uh, Books from Iceland 2018. So literally the only Icelandic author I know of is uh, Sean. And so I was chatting to the late, the Icelandic lady about Sean, but I thought I'd get this and try and find some more. Again, this is Indonesia. This is actually a history of publishing in Indonesia. So this is about like, yeah, contribution of GDP from various creative economy subsectors there. Lots of charts, uh, Indonesian publishing statistics. I got Anete Konste and Reynas Peterson's The Life of I, and I is an introverted Latvian writer. So it's basically a set of like comic strips. So for example, he's realized that extreme weather conditions mean that he can go out walking and he's less likely to bump into people. And what was funny is actually they had little cartoon strips of this guy in the bathrooms as well. But it was above the urinals so I couldn't really take a photo of it because there were like guys walking around. And also what was bothering me actually at London Book Fair was the sheer number of gentlemen who were going into the urinals and they were like standing at the urinals like this going hands free and typing on their phone and I'm like why are like like there was like because it was busy it was heaving with people there and there was like eight people all standing in a row and I'm the only one who's actually holding my pee I was like what is going on I've gone into the twilight zone and then I got Tangerine Sky Poems from Malta edited by Terence Portelli and basically they, they were giving these out free at the Malta stand. They had both poems and stories, but I didn't want to, you know, take the piss by taking all of their stuff. So I, I thought I'll grab some poems and um, I think poems are probably the harder one to get people to pick up as well. But I, as you know, if you watch my channel regularly, I like poetry. So I thought I would give this a chance and then maybe branch out into some more Maltese literature. From so as you can see, most of my visit to book fair this year really was about learning more about translated literature and stuff like that. I kind of pimped myself out a bit in terms of me and my books and my blog and stuff like that and my YouTube channel. But I don't know, people sometimes ask whether you should go to London Book Fair if you're a writer. And I guess my answer is depend. it depends on the kind of person you are. Like I, I'm like I... So I'm an introvert, I'm an INTJ if you go by the Myers-Briggs things. So I'm not very good at just like introducing myself to random people and being like, Hi, my name's Dane, I've got seven books. But I could do with finding me a publisher to publish me books. Maybe if I actually started going up to people and talking to them in that weird voice, it would work, I don't know. But I don't know, Scott Scott from Book Acts, I met up with Scott while I was there and... Uh, he, he, I think he preferred it more for things like the seminars and the talks and stuff. I personally didn't really get much of a chance to see some. I saw one or two, but mostly for me, 
I like going along just to see what all the different publishers are doing. Sometimes, again, I can go up to people and be like, oh, you contacted me through my blog and, you know, asked me to review this. Or, for example, I went up and got chatting to somebody from, I can't remember the pre press name, it was, it was a Welsh publisher anyway. And I got speaking to this lady because I'd pre-ordered Dogtown by Louise Pasteur, which is a Latvian author. And so I didn't realize that the press that published it was a Welsh press. I thought, I knew they were British, but I didn't know they were Welsh for some reason. So then we started chatting about that book and she was like, oh, well, I can like send you a copy of it if you want. And I'm like, well, you know, I've already got it on pre-order. I was already buying it. I think I'd rather just buy it and support the Latvian author and, and, and the smaller press as well. So, but it's just nice to wander around and speak to people and, you know, get a feel for what's happening. I, I do think it's one of those where you would only really go all three days in, if you were like, if you were an exhibitor really. I'm exhausted, I have blisters all over my feet. Like, I'm just tired, so. And it's still on, it's literally happening in London right now while I'm sitting here and talking to the camera. But um, yeah, no, overall it was very good. So I thought I would just add this little bit of waffle and haulness to the end of the, uh, the the video of me going around so yeah so anyway that's it hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you've enjoyed my me taking you along with me to London Book Fair please do hit that subscribe button if you're new here hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video drop me a comment to let me know if you've been to London Book Fair and if not if you plan to go one day in the future and I will see you soon for another bookish video thanks a lot bye bye so these are some of the photos that I took as well. I thought I might as well share those as I think that worked quite well in my Latvian video. But yeah, I had a really good time at London Book Fair and I would recommend checking it out if you get the chance and you can afford the 50 odd pound uh, ticket fee. Catch you later.